Just to refer to some of the issues in general, I mean, most of the questions are about the issue of the two extra additional seats and the allocations thereof. I, I give a commitment to the members that uh, once the government have approved those amendments, they'll be circulated. I mean, um, and people will have advance, enough advance notice um, and chance to consider those amendments. Um, I've been asked directly in relation to the direction of government opinion. Um, Essentially, there are two options. There's the, uh, um, a national panel, or uh, taking on board the, the, the legal opinion that's been referred to by the, 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 um, the Sinn Féin members. There might be other options with regard to that, but also then the possibility that the final seat in, in the Dublin constituency and the final seat in the Southern constituency would be put into deep freeze. I think that's the, the, the phrase coined by Deputy Castles and has been used by everyone else since. What that would entail um, would be a matter, uh, first of all, if that's the decision that the government take, um, it'll be a matter uh, for the European Union in respect of how and the facilities available to those who are elected. Um, the U European Council decision speaks about, the phrase, exact phrase was taking up their, yeah, taking up their seats. Now, does take, taking up their seats is a different phrase than being elected. Um, and therefore, this could have other knock-on effects in relation to dual mandate legislation and if members of the Houses or indeed local authorities wish to contest. Um, uh, so there, I can assure members, and I, one thing I disagree profoundly with Deputy O'Brien, and I don't, maybe he didn't mean, sorry, it was, it was Deputy O'Sullivan, that it hadn't been considered. I think she, I don't know, maybe I took her up wrong. Um, this is, this is like a Rubik's Cube. This has been considered uh, by me and officials and other members of the government from every aspect. And there's no, it's a bit like the Brexit question, is that there's no um, clear cut solution. Um, it's a question of trying to find a solution that, that will be most proportionate uh, to the electorate, will marry with the electoral system that we have, which is a constituency based system. Um, and will also then respect the fact that we are legislating for boundaries in advance of a final decision on Brexit, uh, which we must do because, as everyone said, people are making decisions about who would be selected, who want, who's going to run. Those candidates deserve certainty on the geographic extent of their constituencies. So there's a myriad of competing um, issues. Um, I, I was struck by Deputy O'Quailan's he, he said he, he'd finish his contribution by asking the simple question why. In my time um, here, I, I there's, there's rarely been a less simple why um, in, in this whole discussion. I accept, I think it was Mr. Bassett was mentioned as the, the author of the legal opinion uh, that Sinn Féin um, have referred to and have submitted. Again, it, I can assure you it was, it was considered. Um, there are a whole lot of competing interests when it comes to the rights of Irish citizens, whether they reside in the 26 counties, whether they reside north of the border, or whether they reside in another country of the European Union, or they reside further afield. And equally, I was thinking, as Deputy Caelan spoke, I have two first cousins from South Kilkenny who live in Scotland, which also voted to remain in the European Union, um, uh, and they will not have a vote. Um, in a European Parliament election. Um, so it, it's certainly not, it's not for the lack of um, discussion or consideration, uh, but there's nothing simply why about the whole question of Brexit and again, how we, how we choose to allocate our, our members of the European Parliament. The best I can do for the, the deputies is once the amendments are approved by Cabinet, I would circulate them immediately. Um, and that will be well in advance of when we have uh, the further stages in, in, in the legislation. Just it was a couple of other issues um, that were referenced. Um, I hadn't considered that. I'm sure there are probably other pieces of legislation that have um, referenced Brexit, but this is a real practical political piece of legislation that is affected by, uh, by, by uh, Brexit. Um, in relation to uh, the implications for those who might be elected, as I said previously, the European Union will have to decide 
whether those so elected will be given observational status similar to applicant member members um, or not. Uh, our, our decision is as to firstly how we allocate the, the two additional seats, but also then um, if it is the deep freeze model, um, will it have implications for, um, as I said, for um, other pieces of legislation with regard to the dual mandate is the most obvious one that, that comes to mind. I would also say, even though I never practised, um, legal opinion is not infallible either. Uh, and while I respect um, the view expressed and would share much of it, um, the central question here is what other implications it could have to Irish citizens who reside in other parts of the United Kingdom or in Irish citizens who will reside in other countries of the European Union or indeed applicant countries of the European Union. Um, ultimately though when it comes to this particular piece of legislation the Commission or the committee was curtailed by uh, the um, European Parliament Elections Act of, of 1997 um, in terms of the terms of reference uh, which were considered. The issue of proportionality has been mentioned by many people and is probably the final one that I haven't touched on. Again, it, it is dependent upon the amendments that um, the government will seek to put in, but consideration has to be given to the possible implications on proportionality for a period of time that, until Brexit, becomes effective. Um, but also, if we were to elect on a national panel, um, uh, based on the new boundaries. That would have a uh, lasting effect on proportionality for the rest, uh, for the other, um, uh, for the rest of the period of the European Parliament's exist existence until the next uh, European election in 2024. So proportionality swings both ways to an extent. And if we are to move to a national list or national panel system for those two additional seats, I've always gotten the sense from the Irish people that they value the fact that their representatives are elected for a defined place. Whether that's Clare in, our, in, in the Connacht Ulster old constituency or Clare in the, in the Ireland South constituency now, um, people associate their votes with being for specific or particular identifiable geographic reasons. And if we're to move away from that, it would be a huge electoral change in an Irish context and certainly one that we couldn't uh, deliver in advance of the European election. So. Um, I think I've mentioned, uh, dealt with most of the issues. Deputy Lawless, in relation to, he's not the only person who's expressed concerns about, and there was a lot of submissions with regard to um, provincial boundaries. Um, I would say though, however, that effectively the, the committee have stuck to provincial boundaries except dividing the province of Leinster down the middle. Um, I, I, I readily acknowledge um, as, <laughs> Two out of three, well, three out of four even nearly with a bit of, uh, of Ulster that is in the Connacht Ulster um, area. But as somebody who contested, uh, I'm not sure anyone here contested uh, European elections before. I stood 10 years ago in 2009 and I come from the part of Waterford City that's in Kilkenny. And I remember canvassing in Old Castle and uh, places that I had never been in before, before or since <laughs> in that election. Uh, but the, the extent of the geog geographical difference and the difference in people's opinions and views on issues in the provincial system, uh, as it was, um, was huge as well. Um, and I think that there is a certain um, logic to having, for instance, in my part of the world, that southeastern region effectively with Munster. Um, in uh, the Ireland South constituency. There's a certain logic to that. Um, but again, that's a matter that we will have to consider in advance of any future um, realignment of European Parliament constituencies because the terms of reference specifically require the committee to have, uh, to take into account the previous electoral boundary. And I, I do think that, you know, if we're looking at how those boundaries will be drawn in the future, you know, in, in the widest sense, maybe um, that restriction would have to be looked at then. Thank you.